Hi kids, this is Lindsay again. All right, uh, happy Friday. Today we're going to look at Our World, page 156. We're going to read the story together and look at it. Again, today I'll ask some questions and ask some people to write the answers in the comments. So I hope you are paying attention and I hope you read all of the story and watch all of it on the video with me. All right, on page 156, let's read it. Treehouse Vacation. Number one, Treehouse Vacation. Are you ready for a great eco adventure? Again, this is just like eco tour, but they're going to have an adventure but they're going to be safe and not hurt the environment. Are you ready for a great eco adventure? Eco, E-C-O, has a dash, eco adventure. Eco means it's good for the environment. Have your vacation in a tree house. I told you before, if they put the verb in front they're telling you to do that. They recommend you do that. They think this is a great idea. Have your vacation in a tree house. Now, if you don't know what a tree house is, it's a house built into a tree, very high up in a tree. A lot of kids in the West will have a tree house in their backyard. They will find a big tree that's big enough and strong enough, and they will take some old pieces of wood and make a ladder and then build a tree house in the tree. Sometimes they're a little dangerous. Maybe they're not very good at building tree houses. Sometimes your parents will help you build a tree house. I'm sure you've seen tree houses on television, in movies. People, kids will go in the tree house and play. But not all tree houses are for kids. In Africa, there is a very famous place called the Tree House Hotel. And the Tree House Hotel is near a place with a lot of water. And when you stay in that hotel, you can look out your window at night and watch all the wildlife come to your hotel. Why are they going to that hotel? Because under you, near that tree, there's a place to drink water. So all the wildlife in the area have to go to get water there. And they built a treehouse hotel above that. It's not really a lake. It's just a place where the wild animals can drink. So you'll see tigers and giraffes, other animals that go there to drink underneath you. So it's a good place to see wildlife. So tree houses are not just for kids. Adults have them too. So you know what a tree house is. So let's read it again. Are you ready for a great eco adventure? Have your vacation in a tree house. You can find them all over the world. Treehouse vacations are in places such as Peru, Kenya, Belize, and India. There's a lot to do in nature. So these treehouses are not just for kids. They're for families or couples or maybe just you to go stay in a treehouse hotel. In India, there are treehouse bedrooms from 10 to 25 meters up a tree. In the US, we would say 35 to 80 feet up a tree. That's pretty high. So if you're 10 or to 25 meters up a tree, you're very high off the ground. So let's read it again. 
in India, there are treehouse bedrooms from 10 to 25 meters up a tree. There's a bamboo elevator to carry you up. So why do they call it a bamboo elevator? Well, this elevator is made of bamboo. It's powered by water. So it doesn't use electricity. Water helps the elevator go up and down. The electricity you use comes from the sun. What they mean is when you are in your room and you want to use a hair dryer or watch television, you can. They have electricity, but that electricity is solar power. Remember the word solar? Solar, like solar calendar. Solar comes from the sun. Solar power means they have those special windows you can put on the roof and when the sun is out it makes electricity that is clean energy because it doesn't use any gasoline or oil to make the electricity so this is an eco adventure the electricity you use in this treehouse is clean electricity because it comes from solar power okay let's read it again the electricity you use comes from the sun and there are trails to hike and natural swimming pools to swim in hmm natural swimming pool what's that well they mean a lake now maybe the lake is not natural maybe it's man-made Man-made means somebody dug a hole and the water went in it. So now it looks like a lake, but it is a man-made lake. But they're calling that a natural swimming pool. Now, maybe near the river, there are some pools and they're natural and you can go swimming there, but nobody made them. So those are natural swimming pools. Let's ask a question. Let's ask um, in teacher Daniel's class, who can we ask? Let's ask, um, I forgot everybody's name. Oh, I haven't seen you in so long. In teacher Daniel's class, let's ask, um, oh, I really forgot everybody's names. I need teacher Daniel to give me a name list so I can ask everybody a question. Oh, I know. Let's ask Arthur. Arthur. If you stayed in that hotel, would you be scared to swim in a natural swimming pool? If you stayed in that hotel, would you be scared to swim in a natural swimming pool? Okay, let's read some more. <clears throat> you can visit your neighbor by walking on a bridge made of rope. This is called a rope bridge. These rooms are in different trees. And maybe one tree has your room and another tree has your neighbor's room. Maybe your mom's room is in a different tree. So your tree house is in this tree and your mom and dad are staying in a different tree house in a different tree. Well, you don't have to go down to the ground and walk on the ground and go up again. They built rope bridges between the tree houses. It is a bridge made of rope, so it will move a lot. It's safe if you're careful, but the bridge is made of rope. I'm sure you can imagine what a rope bridge is. Let's ask some questions. In teacher Maggie's class, let's ask, mm, mm, we already asked Brian. Uh, oh, let's ask Mark in teacher Maggie's class. If you visited this hotel, would you be scared to use the rope bridge? If you 
stayed in this hotel, would you be scared to use the rope bridge? If you stayed, S-T-A-Y-E-D, if you stayed in this hotel, would you be scared to use the rope bridge? I think I think I would be scared. I would probably break the rope bridge. You know, you can imagine. Anyway, let's read it. You can visit your neighbor by walking on a bridge made of rope, a rope bridge. You can stay in comfort at a treehouse in Kenya. Kenya is a country in Africa. Now, this treehouse, I'll tell you, is not like a treehouse you imagine in the backyard. This is like a very nice five-star hotel. This treehouse is very famous. The Queen of England even stayed in this treehouse before. So this treehouse in Kenya is famous because it's very comfortable. That's why they say you can stay in comfort. That means it's very comfortable. So you can stay in comfort at a treehouse in Kenya. Kenya. It has two floors and the rooms have big beds. Can you imagine? They built this big treehouse, huge treehouse, and it has two floors. And there are big beds in the treehouse. The windows have colored glass, and the bathrooms have showers. Colored glass means normally our windows are clear, but they use very expensive colored glass, red and blue, to make the windows more beautiful. So obviously, this is an expensive hotel, a five-star comfortable hotel. Even the windows and the glass, even that is special. And then it says, and the bathrooms have showers. You know, you might think that a treehouse is not going to have a bathroom. Maybe not water, but not this treehouse. It's spectacular. They even have showers and bathrooms. So it's an amazing treehouse. There's a small kitchen too. Oh my God, I would be worried I would start a fire and burn down the tree. So there's a kitchen, a small kitchen too. The hotel serves food in your room. Do you know what that's called? If the hotel serves food in your room, it's called room service. If you call room service, they will bring a hot dog and french fries. They even have a menu in your room. You can try it next time. Next time you stay in a hotel, say, Mom, I want to get room service. We don't need to go to a hotel restaurant. We don't need to go downstairs. We can have room service. And if you call room service and say, oh, I want uh, two hamburgers, french fries, and two Coca-Colas, and my mom wants a salad and spaghetti and iced tea, please, they will bring it to your room very happily. They have a little cart, C-A-R-T, and they put all the food on the cart, and they bring it to your room, and they knock on the door, room service, and the door opens, and they bring all the food in. They have knives and forks and napkins. Oh, it's beautiful. Is there a problem? Of course there's a problem. You know the problem. Room service is crazy expensive because we need to pay them to bring that food upstairs. You know, room service in a hotel, oh my God, it's very, very expensive. And if you call room service a lot, your mother and father will go crazy. Sometimes your mother and father will say, no room service, we're not going to waste money. Let's go down to a restaurant because room service is very expensive. Just like the hotel, probably your hotel room probably will have a little refrigerator, right? The hotel refrigerator, the hotel fridge will have Coke and chocolate inside and you can drink that, you can eat that, but it's very expensive. When I was a kid, my parents never let us open the hotel fridge. Okay, let's go back to the story. 
<laughs> the hotel serves food in your room. Room service, right? And if you get tired of living in nature, the city of Nairobi is about 30 minutes away. So let's say this name of the city, Nairobi. Nairobi. Nairobi is a city in Kenya. Kenya is in Africa. So some people say, wow, I would love to stay in a tree house. But there's one small problem. Maybe you want to go shopping too. Maybe you want to see some interesting sights. Maybe you want to go to department stores or buy souvenirs. As you can imagine, this tree house is far from a city. How far? It's about 30 minutes away, which is not too bad. Maybe if you go on a safari in another place, if you want to go to a city, you have to go two or three days. So Nairobi is not very far away. So for two or three nights, you can relax in nature. But if you want to have dinner in the city or go to a department store, buy souvenirs, you can go to Nairobi. It's only 30 minutes away. Okay, so it's great. You have nature and you have city. The city's not very far away. I remember one time my wife and I stayed in a hotel. It wasn't a tree house, but it was in nature. One of those little houses near the beach. And it was very beautiful, but after two or three days, it was a little boring. Beach, jungle, swimming pool, and we wanted to go to the city. But the city was too far away, so we couldn't. So seven or eight days in the hotel was pretty boring. All right, next one. In Belize, you can live with parrots under a guanacasta tree that is about 30 meters tall, 100 feet. Okay, let me explain this. Belize is in South America. It's just a little south of Mexico. So the United States, Mexico, and Belize. It's a very small country in South America. Now, <clears throat> Belize is famous because it has a lot of beautiful jungles, uh, rainforest and jungles. And it's very, very famous for their birds. They have a lot of famous parrots. So if you saw parrots in a parrot shop, a bird, a pet store, maybe some of those parents, parrot, little parrots came from Belize. I said parents. Parrots came from Belize. And you remember what a parrot is? A parrot is that colorful bird that sometimes can talk. Okay, let's read it. In Belize, you can live with parrots under a guanacasta tree that is about 30 meters tall. Guanacasta is a kind of tree. The parrots make good neighbors because they eat the insects. There are other birds too. It's a great place for bird watching. A river runs around the treehouse on three sides. A clear, the clear water is good for swimming. Okay, let's look at this. What does that mean? Well, because this is an eco-adventure, nobody is going to hurt these birds. They're going to protect those birds and the animals. The only animals that need to worry are the insects because the parrots are going to eat them. Well, that's just great because the, the parrots eat the insects and the insects don't eat you. Great, right? Okay, so they said this is a great place for bird watching. Bird watching is a hobby. Um, hunting is when you take a gun and you try to shoot animals. But bird watching is a very different hobby. People will take the guidebook and go into the jungle and try to find, oh, I found this kind of bird, I found this kind of bird. So it's like a competition. Try to find the kind of bird you're looking for. So let's read the next one. The clear water is good for swimming. So there's a river and the water is very clear in the jungle, in the rainforest. So let's ask in teacher Sandra's class, let's ask, mm, 
Who can I remember who to ask? Uh, did I ask Cyril a question yet? I forgot. Cyril, I'll ask you. If you went to Belize, would you swim in the river? If you went to Belize, would you swim in the river? Okay, let's finish reading. In Peru, Peru is also a country in South America. You can stay in a bungalow or a lodge. A bungalow is a small house or lodge. Lodge is another way to say bungalow. Near the Yarapa River in the Amazon rainforest. The main lodge means the most important building connects to the other 10 bungalows by passageways and steel cable bridges. One of the bungalows has a view of the Yarapa River. You can watch people fish in the river and you might even see a river dolphin. Sometimes you can see Cyril, oh sorry, sometimes you can see Cinderella, oh no, I said it wrong. Sometimes you can see Ryder, oh no, 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 no. Sometimes you can see monkeys pass by your room as they look for food. All right, so in Peru, a country in South America, you can stay in a bungalow. A bungalow is like a small wooden house. Or another way to say that is a lodge next to this river. And it's so close to the river, you can watch people fishing. So you look down and people are maybe outside the hotel room. They can throw it down and catch fish. So cool, right? And there are so many monkeys in the trees. So when you're sitting in your hotel room and the window's open, maybe a monkey will come look in the window at you. All right. So on this page, they've talked about all different kinds of treehouse vacations in different countries. Um, some of them are interesting, some of them are really exciting, some of them are a little scary. Some of them are pretty simple, but some of them are five star. We need to write page 157, but we don't have time. So for the next video, I'll write page 157 with you. If you wanna do it first, great but please use a pencil because I think you'll probably make mistakes. Hi kids, this is Lindsay. We have time. We're going to look at page 157. So let's do that now. I thought I didn't have enough time, but I did. So at the top of page 157, let's read number one. You can live with parrots in a treehouse in. Now they want you to find the country that you can live with parrots in a treehouse. So you're gonna go over to the story and where are those parrots? Well, the answer is Belize. Belize, like I told you, is a country in South America. So you can live with parrots in a treehouse in Belize. Don't forget to write a capital B. Number two, you can vacation. Now. You can vacation. What does that mean? It means you can go on vacation. You can have a vacation. So in this sentence, vacation is a verb. You can vacation in comfort in a treehouse in, let's look over the page. Where was it very comfortable? Well, the answer is Kenya. Don't forget to write a capital K. So you can vacation in comfort in a treehouse in Kenya. Kenya is a country in Africa. Number three, you might see monkeys in a classroom. No, 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 no. You might see monkeys looking for food in. Now, we talked about one of those treehouses had monkeys. And which one was it? Well, it was in Peru. So, you might see monkeys looking for food in Peru. Peru, that bungalow, had lots of monkeys. So if you went there, you might see those monkeys looking for food. Okay, a bamboo elevator carries you to your treehouse in. 
Let's look over and find it really fast. Bamboo elevator. Hmm. I don't see it. Where is it? Bamboo elevator. No, there's no bamboo elevator. I don't see it. It's nowhere. No, and I don't believe it. Wait a second. I think I found it. The bamboo elevator is in... No, it's not here. There's no bamboo elevator. They made a mistake. There, no, but there doesn't mention bamboo elevator. No, no, no. Belize, let, let's look in Belize. Is Belize, but the Belize? No bamboo elevators. Let's look at Kenya. Comfort, two floors, windows, colored glass, by the serving room, and entire room. No bamboo elevator. And uh, India, power. Ah, well, oh, I found it. Sometimes you have to look, but I promise you, the answer is in the story. Don't try to guess. Look for the answer in the story. Maybe you think you remember. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure it was that one, but pretty sure it's not good enough. If you have time, do it right. So the answer is in India. A bamboo elevator carries you to your treehouse in India. All right, location, location, location. We're going to look at the different locations where you can do these things. Compare places for a treehouse vacation. Your partner will listen and complete the first two rows. Then listen to your partner and fill in the last two rows. So there are four rows and sadly, uh, <clears throat> um, you're going to do all of them. Uh, it's okay, I'm gonna help you. Watching wildlife. Hmm, where could you do that? Well, let's compare places. Watching wildlife would be really, really good in which place? Well, we know in Kenya. In Kenya, it would be great. So next to watching wildlife, you're going to write in Kenya. Okay? Not really hard. But the reason I wanted you to use a pencil is I want you to compare it to another place. So Kenya, pretty good for watching wildlife. But in India, they don't talk about wildlife at all. So let's write this. Kenya would be better than India for watching wildlife. Kenya would be better than India for watching wildlife. That's what I want you to write. I want you to compare two places. Kenya would be better than India for watching wildlife. How about living in comfort? Well, we talked about all those wonderful places. Let's compare Kenya to Peru. Now, Peru sounds really nice, but it doesn't sound very comfortable. Kenya would be better than Peru for living in comfort. If I go too fast, then just stop the video for a second. But the sentence for this is, Kenya would be better than Peru for living in comfort. But if you want to walk on a tree bridge, hmm, tree bridge, I don't know what a tree bridge is. A tree bridge, did you see anything about tree bridges? I don't remember it, but if you can find it, then I want you to try to write it. Find the tree bridge and compare it to another place. You write it. For example, you might write Belize is better than Peru or Kenya is better than India. You find the tree bridge and you write in there, cha-cha-cha is better than cha-cha-cha for walking on tree bridges. Now that you have the answer, I want, let's see, who do I want? Uh, let's have Rex in teacher Sandra's class write the answer for walking on tree bridges in the comments. Which place would be better than which place for walking on tree bridges? 
you need to find the part about tree bridges, okay? Using power from nature. Well, there's only one place that talked about power from nature. And I'll have to help you because it's in India. They talk about the power comes from the sun. So you compare India to another place. So let's do it. India would be better than Belize. India would be better than Belize for using power from nature. All right. Rank the vacations. Places for a vacation. Rank the vacations in order of preference. One equals most favorite. Work with a partner. Compare and explain your choices. Well, let's do this. <clears throat> I don't know which ones you prefer, but let's write some good things about each one. For example, treehouse, why you want to go there, write a sentence about why you want to go to that treehouse. Astronaut camp, Maybe you could learn, maybe you'll write something like, I could learn about space. Make a movie camp, I could learn how to make a movie. Down to treehouse, I could stay in a treehouse. So what could you do that would be fun? Martial arts, martial arts is like karate and judo. Those kinds of Asian um, exercises are called martial arts. Martial arts camp, you could learn martial arts. Sports camp, you could practice basketball. You could practice soccer. So, underwater hotel, maybe you're right, we could see fish underwater. And for ice hotel, we could, I don't know, why would people want to go to ice hotel? I have no idea why somebody wants to go to ice hotel. But write something like, um, we could look at the stars at night, something like that. So I don't care where you write one, two, three, four, five. I think everybody's answer will be different, which is the best because it's a preference, right? But next to it, why you want to go there, write those reasons. I could learn about space. I could stay in a treehouse. All right. Okay, and we'll review the unit next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.